Hi, I'm Harbin from FTC Team 9794 Wizards.exe, and today I'm going to be talking about the physics of shooting. So for today, I'm going to try to calculate the ideal RPM of a flywheel, uh, a single wheel flywheel for a shooter. And uh, a quick disclaimer before we begin is I'm going to be using arbitrary numbers for these calculations. So um, uh, you're going to want to do these calculations on your own with your own numbers, which is going to change based on how high your shooter is on your robot and how far away you actually want to shoot. And the second thing is, uh, these calculations will really only be useful for calculating the RPM of your motor and gear ratio, but it, you won't find them too useful in modeling the trajectory of your actual ring while it's in flight, because we're going to be ignoring the effects of air resistance and the aerodynamics that come into play with the ring. And the final thing is, uh, we're going to be assuming that everyone has at least an Algebra 2 knowledge with little to no knowledge of physics. So I'm going to start off by talking about the initial constraints. In the vertical components, we're going to say that acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's from gravity. Uh, the final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second, which I'll touch on again later. And our delta y, our displacement in the y direction, is 1 meter, so we're going to be shooting the ring 1 meter high. And the horizontal components, uh, we're going to assume that acceleration is 0, so there's no effect from air resistance or any other frictions. And the initial velocity is going to equal the final velocity. Uh, and that's because the acceleration is zero, so that won't change. And the displacement in the x direction is going to be two meters, so we're going to be shooting two meters away. <clears throat> so now I'm going to talk about the kinematic equations and the variable names I'm going to use today. Uh, I'm going to use t for time in seconds, delta y and delta x, uh, delta meaning change in, uh, it's going to be the displacement in the y and x direction, both in meters. Uh, v subscript f is going to be the final velocity in meters per second. And v naught is going to be the initial velocity. <clears throat> and omega is going to be our rotational velocity. Uh, I didn't put units there because it's going to change in our calculations. And A is going to be our acceleration in meters per second squared. So, and these are our three kinematic equations that we're going to use. The first one is the final velocity is equaling the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Uh, this one is really similar to y equals mx plus b for the slope. And uh, the second one is the displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time plus half the acceleration times time squared. And the last equation I'm going to use is the final velocity is equal, the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times displacement. And over here is going to be kind of the shape of the uh, ring in motion that we're going to assume today. So I'm going to say it's going to travel in a parabola. And you'll see that uh, the center of the parabola is at 2 comma 1. Uh, again, meaning that we're shooting 2 meters away and 1 meter below the goal. And you'll see that... Uh, it's centered at 2, 1, and at that center, the uh, velocity in the y direction is going to be 0, because that's going to be the peak of the curve. Before it was positive velocity, then it slowly creeps down to negative velocity, and right in the middle, it's going to be 0. So that's why we use that in our calculation. <clears throat> 
And next is how I'm going to be splitting this up into vertical and horizontal components. So this is going to be our starting point, and the hypotenuse is our total velocity vector. So that's going to be how the ring is going to leave the robot. And I can actually split this up into a vertical component and a horizontal component. Uh, this is because a law in physics that says the vertical components aren't going to affect the horizontal components and vice versa, meaning the effects of gravity won't change how something moves in the x direction. Okay, so now I'm going to start my example calculations uh, by working in the y direction first. So I'm going to use one of my equations from above and plug in 0 for my final velocity in the y direction. And I'm going to be solving for the initial velocity. And I plug in negative 9.8 for the acceleration and 1 for my displacement in the y direction. And you can see the algebra I did. And I got that my initial velocity is 4.8. 427 meters per second, approximately. And if I scroll down here, you can see my second calculation. I'm now I'm solving for time, and this is going to be useful for when I'm looking for my initial velocity in the x direction. So again, I plug in zero for the final velocity and I use the initial velocity that I just got above and negative 9.8 for acceleration and I get that the time is going to be 0 0.452 seconds. And now I'm going to work in the x direction using my displacement as 2 meters I'm solving for my initial velocity, and I use the time that we just got from above, and this entire right expression is going to evaluate to zero because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So that simplifies this a lot, and I get that my initial velocity in the x direction is 4.425 meters per second. And now, using Pythagorean's theorem, I'm going to find the total exit velocity of the ring as it leaves the robot. So I'm going to do my initial velocities in the x and y direction squared, and add them together and take the square root. And this is going to be that hypotenuse vector that I showed you earlier, and that is 6.259 meters per second. And now I'm going to find the ideal RPM for the motor and the gear ratio I'll need to have this ring shoot well. So I'm going to convert my total velocity to radians per second. And that's going to be omega because now we're not looking at like the linear velocity. We're going to be looking at um, how much the wheel should be spinning. So uh, to find omega, I'm going to take my total velocity and divide that by the radius of my single flywheel. So uh, for this calculation, I use the radius of the flywheel as 50, uh, 50 millimeters, which is 0 0.05 meters. Uh, and that's about a 4-inch diameter. So that's probably similar to what a lot of teams are going to use. And I got my omega as 125.18 radians per second. And now I'm going to convert that velocity to rotations per minute. And to do that, I multiply by 60 uh, because there are 60 seconds in one minute. And I divide by 2 pi to convert the radians to rotations.
and I get 1,195.381 rotations per minute. And now, in this next calculation, I'm going to take that uh, motor RPM that I got, and I'm going to multiply it by 2 once, because we're using a single flywheel. So half of the rotation is going to go into rotating our ring, and half of it is going to be uh, giving that ring a velocity. And we're worried about the velocity right now and not the spin of the ring. So I have to multiply it by 2. And if you're using a dual flywheel shooter, you do not have to multiply this by 2. You can just leave it. But I multiply it by 2 again, to, um, and this one is to adjust for the motor performance in case this motor isn't performing at peak capacity, which they usually never are. And it's also to adjust for battery level and other frictions that we didn't account for. And I get my ideal RPM of the flywheel as 4,781.524 rotations per minute. So in FTC, there's no motor that's going to go that fast unless you use a bare motor. But for this next example, I'm going to use a GoBuilda 3.7 to 1 motor and find out what kind of gear ratio I need. So I divide the RPM of our flywheel by the RPM of the GoBuilda motor, which is uh, 1620, and I get an ideal gear ratio of 2.952 to 1. Uh, so this is going to mean that our flywheel, uh, we're using the gear ratio to speed up the flywheel. So you're going to want the uh, bigger gear on your motor and the smaller one on your flywheel. So thank you for listening to this video. I hope it was useful for you guys. And again, we encourage you to do these calculations yourself, and you probably will need to because you'll have uh, different numbers that you'll need to use. And this is going to be a great way to find a good uh, gear ratio and motor that you can use initially. And you may have to tweak it a little bit uh, just because uh, these aren't going to be perfect calculations. So uh, thanks for listening. And make sure to follow us on our social medias on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram for more updates. and. We'll continue posting throughout the season. Thank you.